It seems they've been around forever. The little plastic toy soldiers who have waged make-believe war for more than 50 years. Although toy soldiers made of lead, tin, and wood have come and gone throughout the ages, these little plastic GIs, created in the aftermath of World War II, have endured. The 11 current poses have not changed in nearly 30 years. Most of the toy soldiers that we got came in a huge plastic bag. And of course, we take them out into the backyard and try and burn them and try and blow them up with firecrackers, do whatever we could, bury them, rip off their heads. Soldiers have remained the number one seller because they have tended to be the most classic of all figures because uh, I think that's where figures really started, were toy soldiers. These legions of toy soldiers all start out the same way, as a mixture of colored dye and polyurethane pellets. Melted and injected into molding machines, they are stamped out by the thousands. Always popular, sales of these mini warriors sagged only once in their 40-year history. In the late 1960s, the popularity of these little green army men suffered from a backlash of anti-war sentiment that swept through the country. During the end of the Vietnam War, basically to uh, take care of the decline in the sales of the figures, we had decided to go to a neon type, blues, bright oranges, reds, to help keep our figure sales up. But just two years later, the company abandoned the day glow look and went back to basics. Today, Processed Plastics churns out an endless stream of green and khaki-colored toy soldiers at an incredible rate of 50,000 figures a day. We've made about a half a billion soldiers. Here we have a standing army of about six million soldiers. Well, standing, laying, sitting. Soldiers are classic toys because it's a simple play activity. They can say, you know, there's good people and good bad people. And I think that's part of the, the real secret is because it's so simple. This program is